Hey guys, it is your favorite Java programmer, Pogasic29 here, and welcome to episode 2 of GitHub Basics. In this episode, I'm going to teach you how to push code from your local computer to your GitHub repository. Before we begin, I just want to let you guys know that uh, my I had my first day of school on Tuesday, so yesterday, and it was very fine, very good, thank you for asking. Uh, so, there is a break... Uh, tomorrow, Friday, and of course Saturday, Sunday, for the Jewish holiday. So you can expect a few videos in the next few days. But uh, once school begins again on Monday, I'd say you could expect probably one video on every day that I do not have school. And on the days that I do, uh, if I can post a video, then I will. Okay, so let's go ahead and get started. Alright, so before we begin, well, uh, I guess we've already begun, but uh, you're going to want to go ahead and open up your GitHub repository, and you're going to want to go to, in a separate tab, Sintevo or Sintevo.com slash SmartGitHG. Uh, the link will be in the description, of course. And you're going to want to download SmartGitHG for the, uh, the correct version for your operating system. Uh, once you have SmartGitHG downloaded, you're going to want to open it up. And it will open up like this, and you should see something that is similar to, and I'll show you in just a second, you should see something that looks similar to this when you first start it up. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to choose Clone Existing Repository. Then when it asks you, you want to enter the repository URL, just the one that you copy from uh, your web browser, like that. Hit Continue, check both of these. Then, when you choose where you want to put it, you're going to want to choose the correct path. So for mine, it is YouTube, Bucket Coding, uh, Workspace, and then uh, Pogo Ball. So you're going to want to, I'm going to choose that. That's the directory that I want to use. Then you're going to go ahead and we'll say we want to open it in a new project, and we will call it Pogo Ball. Go ahead and hit Finish. Now you'll see it will say cloning, doing whatever. Then when we click uh, Reveal in Finder, you will see... Ah, uh, it seems... Okay, so I made a mistake. Hang on for one second. So, in the event that you do make a mistake, you just go to Open or Manage Projects. You can delete the project that you, that you made wrong, and then go ahead and choose New, Clone Existing, make sure all the settings are correct, and we want to save it to there. Hit continue, new project, and we will call it Pogo Ball. So now, if we right click and reveal in Finder, ah, it is still doing the same thing. Alright, hang on one second, let me... Let me just take one second to figure this out. Open. does not seem to be going to the correct repository. Alright, so in that case, what you're going to want to do is, uh, when while Eclipse is open, go to uh, your workspace folder, and where you see Pogo Ball, go ahead and rename it to whatever with an underscore. Then you're going to want to create a new project. And, yes, let's remove that. You're going to want to create a new project. Sorry. Command N new project, go ahead and do the same steps, but this time you're going to choose that folder which does not exist, and at this point, it should work. So if we click Reveal and Finder, you will see that it now has this Pogoball folder, and it pulled the license and the README file. So now what you're going to do is cut everything from the old Pogoball and paste it in there and delete that. Then when you go back in here, you should be able to refresh it, and as you can see, you will now see all of your files. So the next step is we're going to want to specify uh, ignore files. So when you see a file that you want to ignore, like uh, we'll go through, first we want to ignore all the DS store. For those of you that don't know what that is, it can, it's a file made by macOS, and it just contains a bunch of information 
about the folder itself. It's a hidden file, but it will show up. So you're going to want to do Command I, and you can say ignore explicitly or ignore as pattern. In this case, you want to ignore all DS store files. And you're going to want to go through and do that for all of them because they are in different directories. And go ahead and keep doing that. And as you can see, a bunch of files called .git ignore are being created. That is a git file that, you know, contains basically paths of everything that, that you want to be ignored. So when we push the code, then it will not, it will know to ignore it. Uh, next, we're going to want to remove any class file, so anything .class, because a class file is compiled Java code, and there's no need for uh, people to see the compiled Java code, they just want to see the source. So anytime you see a .class file, anything .class, go ahead and remove it and make sure you choose star .class or asterisk. Uh, so we're going to leave, looks like everything else is a Java, of course we want to leave the um, plugin.yml, and we have all of the git ignores. And the next thing you're going to want to do is uh, do go over to bin and type command i again, and you're going to want to ignore the bin directory. And the reason why you want to do that is because the bin directory is where all of the uh, compiled class files exist. So there's no need to upload it because no one cares about your compiled class files. They just want to see the code. So you're going to want to go ahead and click on stage and then choose stage. And this will basically go through all the files and prepare them. And you will see index state is added. Next, you're going to click on, I think it's commit. I, th I was told it was commit. So you're going to click on commit. And you're going to go ahead and type in the message. And the message is what's going to show up. Uh, in this case, we're going to type initial commit. Or, uh, because uh, this is the first time we're uploading any code. Uh, once that's done, you can, you're can you going to want to choose commit and push. But uh, I'm going to go ahead and choose commit. And basically what that will do is it creates this message that just says initial commit. But inside of it is are all of these different like tasks. Like it has to you know, create and upload all these files. Then when you're ready, you can go ahead and click push. Choose current branch master and choose push. And it should say master pushed. And if we go here and we reload, you will see that it says initial commit or commit, initial commit. And if you click on it to view the information about it, you will see that it contains everything that all of the code that we added. And just for a good reference, any anytime you're looking at a commit, anything written in uh, green. Anything written in green is additions, anything hi highlighted in green, anything highlighted in red is a deletion. So if you remove a line, it'll be highlighted in red. And that's one of the great things about GitHub. Other than just allowing other people to access your code, it is what is called version control. It's a version control solution because you can go back and see every single commit that was made and you can see what was changed and, and, you know, what was added and what was removed. So it's a great way to keep track of everything. It's just, it's, GitHub is just so amazing. So, that is all for this episode. You guys learned a little bit about Smart Git HG. You learned how to uh, open a GitHub repository into a local folder and then push your uh, code from your computer to the GitHub repository. So now on this repository, uh, all of the code, if you know, you can go into the SRC folder, there's the plugin.yml, me.pogs, pogoball, whatever, and then you can see all of the files are here, and there is some syntax highlighting that is done by GitHub. So all of the quote, all of the code was uploaded. In the next episode, we are, I'm going to teach you guys how to pull. So uh, if something is changed on uh, if something is changed on GitHub, then I will teach you guys how to get that data onto your personal computer. And uh, that is really all that I want to cover in the GitHub series. Um, I, I I guess I could make I, I will make a video or I will mention in the next one about um, collaboration how you can get 
how you can allow other people to contribute to your repository. Once you know how to push and pull, you just push, you know, you before you start working, you pull the code if there's anything new, then when you're done, you push your results. So I will, I think I'll do a short thing about that. And if there's anything else that you guys want to know about GitHub, please leave a comment and I will make a video about it. Uh, so as always, subscribe if you want to see more, comment with what you want to learn, and if you like this video, click the like button, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.